Despite great efforts, war has been a part of the human experience for all our history. Over the millennia, it has been refined to incorporate increasingly advanced and sophisticated tactics, strategies, and institutions. Yet, when looking at the great battles and terrible conflicts fought across alternate worlds, especially those that take place in what we might consider the future, there is a disturbing trend. All too often, the complexity of warfare, the intricacies of how armies are organized, and the realities of combat are replaced by bland imitations, lacking any sense of practicality or realism. Far be it from me to speculate on this degradation of humanity's military capabilities across these alternate realities, but at least in most cases, the armies involved are actively trying to achieve victory. We can poke holes in their tactics and strategies, but their objective is at least comprehensible. It is rare, however, to come across a military institution so incompetent, whose objectives are so confusing, that I cannot entirely dismiss the idea that they might have been actively trying to lose. In the late 2040s, an alien race known as the White Spikes emerges from the wilderness of northern Russia, and in the span of only three years, wipes out the majority of the human population. The annihilation of the last isolated strongholds is imminent, and the extinction of the human race is seemingly inevitable. But in 2051, the means to establish an artificial wormhole through time is discovered, and a bridge established with the year 2022. With the knowledge of the grim future that awaits mankind, the world's national governments establish a military coalition and send their armies to 2051 to eradicate the White Spikes. Only a fraction of these armies return through the wormhole, and a worldwide draft is implemented to maintain the supply of reinforcements to the future. There are already a bunch of issues with this plan, but the first bit of evidence that the future human resistance really didn't know what it was doing was clear from the first moment it arrived in the past. I'm already starting with a bit of a tangent, but let's say you could go back in time to inform the world of an impending disaster, say, the emergence of an unknown alien species about to wipe out all of humanity. What would you say? I think the way this warning is delivered would be of the utmost importance. You would want it to be clear, concise, and leave no room for misinterpretation or doubt. But the resistance in 2051 handled this a bit differently. We are you. 30 years in the future. It's okay. We are fighting a war. Our enemy is not human. And we are losing. In 11 months time, all human beings in the future will be wiped from the face of the earth. Half of those statements are so overly dramatic as to just be confusing. This is supposed to be coming from the military, not a bunch of poets. We are you? What does that mean? Not human? Are we fighting aliens or some kind of disease? 11 months? 11 months from now? Or 11 months in the future? Time travel is by its very nature confusing, and this weird announcement doesn't exactly clear things up. If your plea for help instead comes across as a deliberate attempt to foster a sense of dread, maybe rethink your recruitment strategy. Okay, so future humanity botched their first message to the past, but having some kind of stable time bridge has got to give the future resistance a pretty clear advantage. The most fundamental consequence of time travel, it seems to me, is that armed with the knowledge of future events, you can work in the present to alter their outcome. The obvious move, I imagine, would be to mobilize the world of 2022 and prepare for the arrival of those white spikes. Humanity has suddenly been given 20 years of advanced notice. But no, this whole situation is poorly explained, and apparently the world of 2051 is an alternate reality, and changing the past in 2022 won't affect it. Or it is the same reality, but time is moving without interruption in both, so as long as the wormhole is open, the future is doomed in 11 months no matter what happens in 2022. I don't know. Either way, the humans of 2051 just want extra manpower from 2022. But why only manpower? Keeping up a steady supply of munitions would probably be much more important. If the Resistance is forced to fight a war in the future rather than able to prevent it in the past, they should be asking for bombs, tanks, equipment. Against an army like the White Spikes, what is really going to be more useful? A thousand guys with small arms or a single multiple launch rocket system and the ammunition to keep it firing? The Resistance of the future seems to lack anything bigger than a Humvee, so why not ask for some tanks or something? Anything that won't just get knocked over by a bunch of white spikes. And while we're on the subject, why are they still using Humvees in 2051? They're already in the midst of being replaced here in 2021. 
very curious. But in any case, it's not long, however, before most of the active military personnel from 2022 have been killed in the future and civilians are drafted in their place. And here is where things really go off the rails. I feel like it shouldn't be necessary to explain this, but becoming a soldier is just like training for any other career. It takes time to become proficient in the necessary skills. Depending on the service branch, there is about two to three months of basic training, followed by more advanced training that can last many weeks more. But the future resistance makes it clear that even for drafted civilians with no combat experience, they're not interested in any of that training. What you think you know about basic training does not apply. You will not march, crawl, or climb. There will be no push-ups, no pull-ups, no obstacle courses. These draftees are instead given seven days to learn basic skills and then sent directly into the future. These people aren't even equipped with uniforms, they just go into combat with whatever they happen to show up wearing. Okay, so then the question is, what does the future resistance hope to achieve with this extra manpower? What are they trying to accomplish? Well, obviously they want to eradicate the white spikes, but realistically, the opportunity to do so has already passed. Sending in a few thousand soldiers, or draftees, every few days into a world where only 500,000 people are left alive is not going to alter the outcome of the war. So there must be some sort of other reason to send in these soldiers, right? Some sort of more feasible, intricate plan to win the war where a few thousand troops can make all the difference. Well, there is. Kinda. A bioweapon is being developed in the future with the potential to wipe out the white spikes. But this seems to be an entirely separate project, independent from the wormhole to the past. I can't find any evidence that the success of this project is dependent on soldiers from 2022. During one deployment though, a group of people from 2022 are sent to the Futures version of Miami to recover information needed to create the bioweapon. Victory in the war is dependent on this mission apparently, so again, why they're trusting it to draftees instead of their own remaining soldiers, I have no idea. Except, at the same time, Miami has just been lost to the White Spikes, so the Resistance is about to carpet bomb the entire city. It's now a race to get this information out of the city before the bombs hit. This seems like a case where the left hand of the Resistance doesn't know what the right hand is doing. They have two operations in Miami, directly at odds with each other. And what is the big rush to bomb the city? The entire planet has been decimated, so what does it matter if Miami has fallen? Why risk destroying potentially war-winning information? And, just as a side note, the bombers launched to destroy Miami are F-22 air superiority fighters, which are entirely incapable of saturation bombing. They blow up a few streets and that's about it. So again, what was the point of that? Eventually, however, the bioweapon is developed, but during the subsequent operations undertaken to complete it, only a single soldier from 2022 is involved, with the remainder being native to 2051. So, what was the purpose again of bringing these untrained conscripts into the future? The only plan realistically able to destroy the White Spikes had no clear need for them. It gets almost dizzying trying to pinpoint all the various ways in which the war against the White Spikes makes no sense. Did nobody think that by draining the world's military forces to fight a war in the future, they would become correspondingly less able to resist the White Spikes when they first arrived? If that theory about the two alternate universes is correct, then Universe A in 2022 has just wasted all its military power defending Universe B in 2051. How were they not planting the seeds of their own defeat? But I think the worst aspect of this war is the criminal negligence displayed by the resistance of 2051. The tragedy of war is that so often human life is wasted in the pursuit of meaningless objectives or within hopeless situations. There is a responsibility of leadership within any military apparatus to work to limit such needless carnage, but those who directed the war against the White Spikes abandoned this first duty. They thought nothing of taking the lives of their own parents and grandparents, and quite literally dropping these unprepared people into a meat grinder. A very big deal is made of how few people return from the future war, but nobody seems to have put in too much effort to try and change that. And it's not like this was 1916. There were plenty of other options beyond just, well, send more bodies through the time tube. I can't help but feel a sense of wasted potential. The human race has spent so much energy figuring out better ways to fight and win wars, and when we finally have the chance to put all that knowledge to the test against an alien enemy completely guilt-free, we suddenly revert back to Paleolithic-era tactics. But that, of course, is just my opinion. 
And even though I am actually from the future, I'd like to draft your opinions from the past. Did the plan to defeat the White Spikes actually make sense? Was going up against monstrous creatures in light utility vehicles instead of a 70 ton main battle tank actually a really smart move? Is the name White Spike kinda dumb? Let me know in the comments below, and until next time, this has been Incoming. In Incoming, the Templin Institute discusses the theories and ideas found across alternate worlds. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to join the Templin Institute, consider pledging to our Patreon page. Along with increased security access, you'll be able to vote in polls to determine future topics, get custom wallpaper every week, and receive some other exclusive rewards.